concerns, and he can let you know what he'd like to do in your life. You know, as, as, as a teacher, you know, I, next year I celebrate 40 years in the trucking business. Well, I, after 40 years, you learn some things. Don't make me an expert, but you know what works and what doesn't work. And you try to convey that to your students. <clears throat> and it, it never fails. It's just that, you know, everybody's got their own personalities. But I just found that the best thing to do is, to, you know, here's what will work. You know, here's what doesn't work. you got to decide yeah. how you're going to receive that information. Okay? <laughs> and God tells us the same thing. Yeah. You know, when we, when we, uh, we got our, uh, our Equinox out there, you know what it came with? It came with an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's interesting because it came with it. It'll tell you because, you know, they got new stuff on there. We, we didn't know all about that, all, all the stuff that's on there. But, you know, we look at the manual and find you just set the clock or yeah. doing that stuff. Right. And I thought, well, wow. Now, now we have a, a for, for something mechanical, we have an instruction manual. Now, how come life doesn't give one? But God's smarter than that, right? Yeah. God gave us an instruction manual. It's right here. Oh, yeah, it yeah. tells us how to do it. Yeah. And it starts with a connection with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it starts with. I always love, and, and Pastor talked about it, we made reference. I always love how God dealt with the first family, Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. You know, he walked with them and cooled the day. Mm -hmm. He had a relationship with them. Yeah. I thought, that would be so awesome. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, how, how much close can you get when you inside of him? Exactly. You know, I think he can't yeah. get much closer than that. You know, and the thing is, you get that still small voice. God will tell you. My sister and I, we, we talk about this sometimes. It says, you know what, Tim? It's so much better to pray before the fact than after the fact. Oh, yeah. We tend to do it the other way around. We want God to get us out of trouble when he would have told you not to get in trouble in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> if you would just listen to me to start with. Exactly. You know what? One time I had uh, my, my granddaughter, and, and she's such a sweet young but you know how kids, they, they think it's funny to throw things at you. Oh, yeah. And so I'm, I'm standing in the doorway, and she's taking these toys out, and she, she's throwing them. Well, the problem is she's, she's on the edge of her bed, okay? And she's got a, a basket up here and toys underneath. Well, as she got grabbing the toys out and throwing them at me, thought it was funny, she was laughing, everything started tipping. So she's on the edge of the bed, and she's looking at me. You know, and she's getting ready to go. And, and she said, Grandpa, help me, help me. And I'm just standing there and says, okay, I'll be glad to help you, but you're going to not never do that again. You're never going to throw anything at me again, are you? You know, and she's got the most pitiful look. The kids are up and set eyes, you know. The mouths look like, you know, the pictures they used to have in the 70s. You know, the kids with the big eyeballs, the best eyeballs. She's looking, oh, Grandpa, please help me. And then I'm thinking, she got herself in that situation. Yeah. You know, she would have stopped doing but you know what? You know what you do? You go over and help her. Yeah. But she's got to make some decisions too. Yeah. Okay? And she did. So I never did. And she never did. She was probably five or six. She never did do that. Because she realized she was creating problems on her own. Yeah. You know, that somebody had to come and help her with. But you know, God is so wise. He don't make mistakes. He loves us so much. And that's what I really think he wants us to get a picture of this year. I just see that. He wants us to stop worrying about all this other stuff. Stop getting ourselves in trouble and go to him first. God, what do you want me to do? Amen. Isn't that interesting? That's what happened to Paul, you know, when, when, when he was Saul at the time. And he got knocked off and, and he couldn't see it. God, you know, are you, you persecuted me. He thought he was just persecuting the church. He didn't realize, man, when you touch God's church, you touch him. Yes. That's why I say you can't touch somebody's kid, grandkids. I'll tell you what, you're going to talk about somebody get upset. Yeah, no. You don't touch my kids. When you start touching the church, yeah. Yeah. tell you what, God's going to do something about it. And yeah. Paul caught it. And then he cried, you know, he got knocked down. What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do? Let's cry it out. Because he knew something was wrong. And what God did was so magnificent was he did not take Paul, Paul you know, and when he got converted to Paul and Saul, Saul had a lot of enthusiasm for what he was doing. It was all misplaced. God didn't take that part away, because that part was good. He just needed to redirect his enthusiasm, and now instead of tearing the church up, now he built the church up. And that's the difference. Because God
what do you want me to do with my life? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because nobody, I don't care what person's on the face of earth, there's a plan for your life. Right. God has a purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. And I want to just share a couple of scriptures. This is Psalms 59, uh, verse 9. Oh, I love, oh, my strength, I will watch and give heed to you and sing praises. For God is my defense, my protector, and high tower. When you start thinking about all that God is, he's your best friend. Yeah. You know, when we talk about, he's like your babysitter at times. You know, like your mother and your father, somebody you can go to, somebody if you're hurting. And, and we look at, I, I love, this is probably the, one of my favorite scriptures all time, Isaiah chapter 9, 6. Because I love the names of God. The way it's for, uh, this is uh, Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. We got a wonderful counselor. Yeah. You know, the best counselors are not the ones who talk all the time. Uh -huh. You know, because you, you pay $140 an hour to go listen to them talk when they need to listen to you. Yeah. The best counselor, what they do, I remember I had some situation his name was Bonnie God bless her and I was mad when I went in there I mean I, I didn't go because I was happy I was going because I had some, you know and and, she, and they always ask the same question they said what do you come here for like what do you come here for you know I, I hate I'm sorry we uh, and I we, we have a joke about that we go to the bank and they always ask you there at our bank what you come here for and what what they come in for <laughs> What are they coming? What are they coming to bank for? Yeah. Maybe I want some candy or something. I don't know. They always give candy, right? But that was always an odd question, you know. But you know, you think she come in there and boy, I mean, it was like the floodgates, and she was just sitting there, and all this stuff was just coming out. I was just so unhappy and all this, and she just looked at me. She had such a peace on her, you know. And I'm just going and said, "Are you done? <laughs> are you done?" And she just said this, it revolutionized my life. Tim, you don't have to live that way. There's a better way of living. Yeah. I never forget that. You know, because that's what you need sometimes. When they're in confusion and stuff, there's a better way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a better way to go. God has a friend. Don't fight against God. You know, go with God. Yeah. That's a big difference. And yeah. we think about this. He said, wonderful counselor, mighty God. Yeah. When we think about mighty, that's powerful. Yeah. Uh, powerful, think about it. We said the cartoon Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you think about that little mouse. You know, he had the big muscles up there. But everybody loved Mighty Mouse because yeah. he was powerful. When Mighty Mouse came, the, the rest of the cats had to flee because yeah. Mighty Mouse was on the job. And what you think about that, Mighty Mouse, everlasting father of eternity, prince of peace. How many people do you know that need peace in their life? The problem is they don't have the Prince of Peace. That's what they need. Yes. It's not peace doesn't mean the absence of stuff going around. In the midst of it, you got peace. Yes. Yes. People say, you know what I mean? People say, well, Tim, how can you be so calm? How can you be so calm? I said, well, you know, I look at who I have on inside of me, the mm -hmm. Prince of Peace. Because I know as an instructor, I have to be calm. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay? Because the more relaxed I am, yes. the more the student. Absolutely. And all the years that I've been a Christian and get the image of God, not one single image of I ever got him in heaven that he's running around and him and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, what are we going to do about this situation? Jesus, did you think about that? Oh, no, man. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't have that plan. I didn't know. I never get that image. Not one time do I get that image. I get this holiness. That's why it's high. So I'm high and lifted up. Because his glory's up there. I got it. I got it. I got it taken care of. Yeah. And that's really where God wants us. We worry way too much. Yeah. We are so blessed. Mm -hmm. I, we were just thinking today, I, I got my, my uh, you know, smartphones are nice. You know, you keep track of your accounts and stuff. And, and we just thinking, you know, and just thinking where we come from. Sure. I say that a lot, but folks, I really believe God wants us to never forget that. Never forget, because if we forget where we come from, you know, people sometimes they get high and mighty and, and think they're all this or that. But let me tell you, let me tell you what, you know, you don't remember where God brought you from. No. You Sometimes you can forget that. You can forget that you was down here, you didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about how and hog, you know, sometimes it was low or hog, let me tell you. <laughs> but, I mean, when you're down eating big feet and all that other stuff, chicken feet and 
everything else, babe. I mean, that's slow. But you know what? When God brings you out, you know what you said? I remember when. I remember when my covers wasn't full. I remember that time when you prayed you got paid on Friday. And I tell you what, Thursday night, you was praying to make it home on the fumes you had. You know, I'm telling you what, Lord, Lord, please, please, those, the gas light that come on, I'm still a few miles away. Please, I don't want to be pushing this car. Please, you know, next morning, your check come in at 3 in the morning. Now, can I make it to the gas station? <laughs> say, hey, brother, can you follow me? Will you follow me down the gas station just to make sure I can make it down there? Okay? I'm glad those days, hey, that you can, hey, hey, I can pass the gas station up on payday. Yeah. I got enough to get to work the next day. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, we all been there. And, and what we want to do tonight is just praise God and realize how mighty he is, how powerful he is, and what plan he has. And we're not going to fight God. We're going to go with God and do what he has for us. Yeah. Just think about all the marvelous things he has in store for you. All the blessings he's got. It's just like he's just waiting. Just waiting. All I'm asking for is a group of people that will believe me. Yes. Amen. See, that, that's what's so powerful. God's got all this stuff. Just ask me. Yeah. Just think about what all he's done. That, is, to me, is so powerful. Sometimes you don't get blessed because you just don't ask for it. That's, that's all. Just ask me. I want to be glad to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm telling you what, I just feel that that... that I, I know I say it over and over again, but I really feel that's where God wants his people at. Yep. Just geez, keep building God up. Yes. Keep praising him. Take that time to spend with him. Yes. And it'll never regret it. I've never regretted one moment ever speaking with God, Amen. ever praying, Amen. get down on your knees. Sometimes it's crying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just groan in the spirit because you can't even get out what you're praying for because your heart's so broken. But God said he comes to heal the broken heart. Yes. Okay, hey, no situation you don't understand. God said, you might not understand, but I understand. Amen. I understand the cry of your heart. And you know what? I'm going to do something. Why? Because you're my child. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to deal with that situation. You just let me handle it. Vince belonged to him. We, sometimes we want to move everything ourselves. And, you know, I said, no, no, let our mighty God handle it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So we're going to open that. Session up tonight <laughs> about praise. Huh? Taking a paper. Taking a paper. <laughs> yes. Open it up tonight about how good God is. Yeah. So we would like to start it off and, and say good things about God, praise what He's done Lord. for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Upon the throne of 
of David over his kingdom to establish it, to hold it with justice, with righteousness in the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Just think about this. His kingdom, never going to be an end. That's right. You know, when you think about heaven, those, those people that have gone on before, one day you'll be able to spend time with them forever and ever. Isn't that good? Amen. You never have to leave. You know, I, I we was thinking about my mom. I used to go out and visit her. And she, she'd say this at the end. We, I may spend a couple of days. And she said, Tim, can we turn the clock back to when you got here? Let's turn it back and start all over again. Because you know what people want the most? They love that. People love when some family comes and they spend that good, wholesome time together. That's what matters. Amen. You know, them hugs, I'm telling you what, sometimes they hug you, never going to let you go, but I need to catch a flight, you know? You know, because it's important. <clears throat> but I, I got to get back to my life too, Mom. I'd like to spend more time. But at the end, that's what people want. Say, my family. Because that's what it's about. That's what we think about God. God loves family. He created family. He made it. He, oh, he ordained that. He just wants family to be circled around him. He wants God to be in the middle of that family. Amen. You know, they used to have families on the fam. You know, when he went to church. Right. I, I, I love that. You know, the mom was there. The dad was there. And the, 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 the little boy was dressed in a suit. The, the little, little, little girl had a nice look like her mom. And they was all in the row. And sometimes they had a praying on the fan. They was all praying together. Boy, that God loves that. Yeah. And that's what he wants. Someone else. Yes. Uh, you know, for me, <clears throat> sometimes uh, I'm praying and, and, and I ask God, you know, to speak to me. And, and sometimes I get a little, not frustrated so much, but uh, bummed out. supernatural experience because I was I literally felt like I was being moved mm -hmm. and pointed in a certain way uh, but I, I have to keep reminding myself that every time that I feel like I'm not hearing I need to make sure that I stay in turn and knowing that God's always with me because the devil's going to come and start right. creeping in well he's going to want you to hear because he's going to work you you know right
So when we got to the church, the sanctuary was full. It was completely full. But I, I believe God was in this, okay? So we got there. They was taking them off the cross, okay? You can see through there. They was taking them off the cross. They took them down. Well, what happened is that they, they, they do some other things in the story. But the resurrection, Jesus, he come down through the basement, and he come up, and he come up, and we were sitting on benches out in the lobby, and he came right up beside me. And, and, and he just looked at me, you know, and we were sitting there, and he smiled. You know, it's just, it's a play, but it was so real. And then he sat down, waiting for it to go in there. And he sat down on the bench. And I'm telling you what, it was a play, but that was real. Yeah. I'll never forget. He had the shining robe. It was resurrect. It was so powerful. He sat down and he smiled. And it was like, wow. You know, this, this God once smiled at me. He thought I was important enough. And he smiled. It's like, man, I wanted to go over <laughs> hug him or something. You know? <laughs> and he sat there. He had to go in the, in, inside there. But I'm thinking when he when he's turned and smiled and he sat down beside me, how you talk about powerful, you know, and you realize that's what kind of God we serve. Every single person valuable to God. Everybody. You know, he died for all the sins of the world. He didn't die just for one person. He died for everybody, so they had a chance. It's up to them if they want to receive him. But you know what? Here he is. He's offered himself. Do you want to take what he's done for it? And that just that has affected me. That that was you know 20, 20 years ago. But that affected me to this day because that's how much God loves you. Uh -huh. You know they have a picture that sometimes you see it on, on walls and stuff. This is how much Jesus loved you because when He died, He was like this with His arms open. Uh -huh. That is so powerful. This is how much He loved you. You want to know this God loved you? Let me tell you. He went to the cross for you, and His arms are like this. That's how much He loves you. Amen. So powerful. Amen. <laughs> All right. <somebody> else. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's uh, go ahead and stand up and go to prayer. And let's thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we want to thank you for all that you've done. We want to thank you for being our mighty counselor, wonderful, mighty God, our counselor. Lord, we want to thank you for the fact that you care about us. We are that important to you. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, all the blessings you have given us, Lord, we can count it for hours and hours and hours because you bless us so much. Oh, Father God, thank you. We want to thank you tonight because you are such a good God. Those prayer requests that, that unspoken or prayer that you answer, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the fact, Lord, we just ask you just to rain, rain down on us. And every day change us. Work inside of us. Hallelujah. Make us more like you every day. That's what it's about. Father God, sometimes we can get down. And, 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 and we start looking down. But it's time for us to look up. Because that's what it's about. To raise our voice, to raise our eyes toward heaven and say hallelujah and raise our hands toward you and say hallelujah. Because you are a mighty God. You are powerful. Hallelujah. Lord, that everything, you, you always cause us to triumph. Always. Our God will always triumph. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. You know, you are worthy. You are so good. You are so awesome. Father God, Lord, the Bible says, for with God, for with God all things are possible. And that's what it's about. All those things in our life that, that they may be trying to pull us down and, and all those things, Lord, we're not going to let that happen because we're going to look towards you. Hallelujah. Because you can do the impossible. You can turn those situations around. You know how to get into the people get to the right shop, get the right job, get, get the right family situation. Lord, I tell you, Lord, we just want to thank you tonight. We want to praise you tonight because you are powerful. You can change lives. Lord, we ask you to be with our grandchildren, be with our children. Hallelujah. Be with our co-workers. Lord, we want to thank you for our job. We want to thank you for our school. We want to thank you, Lord, for our homes and our communities because, Lord, it's about you. I was saying, if you be lifted up, if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. And that's the way we're looking at it tonight. We draw all men unto you. That they can see. They can see you. Because it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. 
holy day for us. That'd be cake. Right? That's right. It's a holy day. It's God day. Every day. He's mercy new every day. I do, I do on the 13th, too. Right? <laughs> Easter Gate House of Prayer, 7 p.m. All right, we're going to speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you?
Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Lord, we love you. We're so grateful, Lord, that you first loved us. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace. You are a great and a mighty God, and there is none like you, Lord. You alone are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing you and being able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We bless your name tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for those that have gathered here tonight to worship you, to hear from you, to touch you and be touched by you. Bless them, Lord. Bless us all, Lord. We need you and your blessing, and we receive it in Jesus' name. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> praise God. Amen. God bless all of you for being here tonight. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Tim. Great job as always. I appreciate everybody's testimonies and giving glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to uh, just try to be as brief as I can tonight so you can all get out of here and get home in time to get a good night's sleep and get up and go do it again tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. He gives us strength, praise God, for every day, for every situation, for every circumstance. Thank the Lord. Amen. Roberto, we're going to start in Luke chapter 2, and we'll just read uh, two verses of Scripture. Uh, verses 48 and 49. Thank the Lord. Praise God. I don't know about anybody else, but I got my Christmas lights up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Put them up today, and yesterday and today, in fact, for a little couple hours each day. Sally's happy, and when mom is happy, everybody's happy. Praise the Lord. So, amen. We don't have them on. We don't turn them on yet. But we, uh, we usually wait till about Thanksgiving just, just to not overdo it. Of course, I leave them up till July, so that makes a little bit of difference. Praise the Lord. We've got to stretch it out a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Luke chapter 2, verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Uh, most of you are familiar with this. It's when Jesus was a young, uh, young man, uh, and uh, adolescent probably, and, and uh, they had gone to Jerusalem for the atonement, I suppose, for, you know, the sacrifices and so forth, and they were there for several days, or maybe it was for a, a census, I don't remember now, but nevertheless, when they got ready to leave, they couldn't find him. In fact, they got two days away from Jerusalem on the way home and realized he wasn't with them. That makes me wonder a little bit, but, but yeah. praise <laughs> the Lord, amen. We lost Allison once in a mall, amen, which she, we didn't really lose her, we just thought we did, because she was hiding in, you know, they had those circular yeah. clothes things. See, this is when we lived in Texas. She was just a little, I don't know, three years old, maybe four. And, I mean, we were freaking out. And finally, we just said, everybody be quiet, be quiet. And you could hear, Mom, Mom. She was afraid to come out because she knew she was in trouble after hiding, and we were freaked out, you know. She's in one of those things with the had shirts or blouses or something all the way around. She's right in the middle of it, and she finally peeks out. But... <laughs> So I can't quite imagine being two days without knowing where she is. But then they traveled in large groups and families, kind of extended families. So I, I guess they assumed that he was with other members of the family. And so they weren't really worried until they started looking and couldn't find him. So this is the, the outcome of that. She, Mary says to Jesus, she said, come on, why, why did you treat us like this? You know, we've been freaking out trying to figure out where you were. And Jesus said, well, why, why would you even worry about it? Don't you know that I would be about my Father's business? Praise the Lord. So the point is we are the body of Christ. Amen? The church. Yes. And the church isn't defined so much by what we separate ourselves from, 
but by what we have given ourselves to. You know, uh, when I was in the Holiness Church, and I thank God for that. I thank God for all that I learned and for the devotion and the dedication to God that I was taught. Now, there's things that I disagree with to this today, but, but I appreciate most of everything that I was taught because it helped me to understand what we are about. Praise the Lord. Now, it might have been a bit, little bit skewed because it might have been a little bit too much about us and not enough about him. But the point being, we have made Christianity uh, exclusive almost like the Jews have or had, excuse me. And uh, when we separate ourselves from everything, we lose our ability to communicate with those people. Yeah. Amen. Now, I'm not saying we should be out, you know, shooting up dope in some dope house somewhere or, you know, what I'm saying. But we can't alienate ourselves so much from people that do have problems that we have no influence. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have Christian music. We have Christian, you know, bumper stickers. We have Christian kind of a culture within itself. And I'm not against any of that. I'm just saying it's hard to reach the unreached if we kind of hunker down in this other attitude, amen? So it's not so much, I was taught early that, it, you know, you've got to come out from among them and be separate. I get that. But we, in a lot of cases, have separated ourselves so much that we forget this is about what we are giving ourselves to right. rather than what we are pulling away from, amen? Mm -hmm. So look, look at this in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 15 and 16. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, Jesus never asked us to be a subculture, a religion. He asked us to be a counterculture, spirits. Amen? We're not to be something off to the side, hidden, separate, but we are to be a counterculture. In other words, something that comes out and faces the culture that we live in. We're in the world, we're just not of the world. Amen? Right. We're in this culture, even though we're not a part of this culture in a lot of ways. Amen? Yeah. So, praise God. The question becomes, how can we be in the world without becoming one of the world, right? It, that's what we all kind of struggle with. We, we're in the world. We want to influence, be an influence in this world, but we don't want to be of this world. We don't want to be identified as that. You understand what I'm saying? It's a fine line that we walk because we want to be accessible and we want to have access to this culture right. and be an influence to this culture without being absorbed by the culture without being influenced totally by the culture. And that's the struggle that we have. That's, that's why sometimes it sounds like we're contradicting ourselves. We're not. We're just trying to figure out how to make the thing work the best, how to be led by the Lord into these situations, amen, and into these circumstances. So how do, how do we uh, influence without being influenced? How do we affect without being affected? Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? Yeah. All right. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Colossians 1, 5 and 6. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. So, he tells us, Mark, that we are to go and preach the gospel to all the world. So it would be to our benefit and to everybody in the world that we know what the gospel is, right? Praise the Lord. So here it is. The hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the, in the, word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew 
the grace of God in truth. That is the gospel. Yes. Praise the Lord. We understand it's the death, burial, and resurrection, but that's how grace is released. That's how we have the grace of God in truth. That's the gospel. Praise the Lord. Verse 23, same chapter. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Yeah. I'm telling you how we can be an influence, praise the Lord, without being influenced. Which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Praise God. Amen. So, it's the gospel of grace is the answer mm -hmm. to how we influence without being influenced. Affected. I mean, Jesus wasn't afraid to be around prostitutes, alcoholics, you know, tax collectors, thieves, liars, crooks, everything, you name it. He, was, it didn't, he wasn't nervous about it because he knew he was, and if you notice, he, didn't, he never treated them the way he treated the religious, kind of looked down in their nose at everybody, people. He didn't have a problem with the sinner. He had the answer for the sinner. Praise the Lord. And when you give them the gospel of grace, they'll receive it. It's religion that they're afraid of. Yep. You know, we want to have not a, a fear, not to be afraid of God, but to have a fear of God. A, you know, an awesomeness of, just like what we were talking about here tonight. How great, how mighty. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 6, you know. Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, that's, he wants us to, to be, you know, like, I mean, come on, when we see the president of the United States, a king, a queen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm always amazed by, by these programs about the royalty in Europe. I'm not impressed, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, but they have this kind of ceremonial thing that is kind of cool in all the pomp and circumstance. The same with the president, you know. The president's just another person, man or woman, whatever it is, but he's elected to the highest office in the land. They're to be respected. They're to, you know, you, it's quite a deal, you know. And so with God, it's the same way. He wants us to be awed by him. He wants us to not, to not take him for granted, but to not be so afraid of him that we can't approach him, that we, that we don't have access and feel a personal uh, relationship with him. Amen? Amen? And then we have to be able to try to Im impress other people with that truth. And you know, uh, any kind of any kind of precision instrument, amen. It, it, they always uh, they'll take a camera or a you know a microscope, a micrometer, uh, car engine. Praise the Lord. They all need to be every once in a while. Periodically, they have to be recalculated. Amen. And so, in other words, you don't you don't turn up a car engine once. And then just forget about it. Right. If you do, you're going to have problems, praise the Lord. Because just by using it, it's going to need periodically to be recalculated, to be recalibrated, amen, to be tuned up. Right. So that it runs the way it's supposed to run. So it isn't wearing itself out in areas that it's not supposed to and all the, you know, all the things. that, and, and we know that, right? So Jesus gives us the gospel of grace in order to recalibrate the steadiness of our spirits right. in a natural world. Yes. In other words, the natural world is constantly trying to pull us in and judge us, critique us, ridicule us, find, you know, point their finger. Tell, I remember when you, I, I think about Tim saying, that was B.C., That'd be a good thing for all of us to remember in a quick response to people. Because, come on, we, we have people that knew us when? Before Jesus, right? And sometimes even after Jesus, praise the Lord. But that's why he gives us the gospel of grace is so that we can go back, reset, recalibrate, and keep moving forward. Keep going in the direction that God intended us to go. To keep having the influence and the impact on people around us that he intended us to have. Without that, you know, his design is for us to recalibrate with him, using him like the compass, amen, the compass of his word. Yes. Amen? You can't live for God without the word of God. Exactly. 
I mean, I don't know how you could do it. It's like Tim was saying. This is our manual. You get a manual with your car. In fact, I got to look in mine because the clock in my car still says it's an hour later than it actually is. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So I got to go look in the book again. I looked it up last year and I forgot already. Praise the Lord. So you have to go back. Amen. And recalibrate, reset. Amen. It's for all of us, we have to do it. And we have to do it on a fairly regular basis. Amen. Because if we don't, if we don't go back to Jesus, back to the gospel, amen, then we'll come to that place where we, we're, 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 we're thinking that once I was saved, but now I'm lost. Once I was found, but now I'm not so sure, right? You can't influence, as it's already been said, you can't influence, you can't help somebody if you're helpless, yeah. right. right? I mean, you can't, you can't bring joy to somebody if you're miserable. You can't Talk about the peace of God if you're totally distraught and, and freaking out over everything. Amen? So we have to be recalibrated. We have to reset. We have to go back to the Word of God, back to Jesus, back to this gospel of grace to reset. And you need to do it on a regular basis because you, we hear all sorts of messages, don't we? I mean, I love Christian television. I watch it all the time. That's that and football is about all I do watch. So <laughs> seriously... I don't watch much news. I, I, I used to, but I'd get so aggravated that I thought, this isn't helpful. I mean, I'm getting more information, but I can't do anything about it. So why do I want the information? I need revelation, praise the Lord. I don't need more information. So we have to, we have to learn to reset, to recalibrate, to, to tune up, if you will, amen, so that we can have an influence, so that we can light up the world, amen, and, 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 and impact others, so that we're not feeling like we're lost, when we're trying to reach the unsaved, you know, when we're trying to reach the lost, we need to know that we are in good stead with God, that we are steadfast, amen, and unmovable, unshakable in our faith and in our relationship with Jesus, amen. You can't, you can't BS people. You can't pull the wool over their eyes, amen, and make them think you have something you don't. It comes out phony. It comes out hypocritical. People spot it right away. They don't have to be saved to have discernment when it comes to things like that. Right. So we need to be sure of what we have exactly. in order to be able to release it, amen, and influence others. Praise the Lord. All right, Romans chapter 8. And I want to I read this whole thing because I think it's worthwhile. Romans 8, 29 through 39. Praise God. We have to constantly remind ourselves, constantly go back to the Word of God to to remind ourselves of this relationship that we have with God, of God's unfailing love, of His mercy, of His grace, and that it isn't just for us, it's for whosoever will. Yeah. Amen? So for whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. Now if you wonder, so I'm just doing a backup on Tim's message this evening, but <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, thank you Tim. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. If anybody thinks that there, there's not a plan for your life, you haven't read the Bible. Right. You're, you're, you, God has predestinated you yeah. for a purpose. Right. It's not just to fumble around and not know what's going on from moment to moment, but to go back to the Word, recalibrate, and then move forward in whatever that purpose and that plan is as God unveils it to you. Yeah. And believe me, he is talking to you. There's just so much other stuff going on that you really have to kind of block things out and not allow yourself to measure yourself by yourself or amongst yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because it, you'll, it'll make you feel like, well, maybe God's not going to talk to me today because I... Have, no, God's going to talk to you all the time. Amen? He, he, he's always reaching out to you. He's always speaking to you. Amen? So predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's one of the best scriptures there is. Yeah. If God's for you, and he just told you that he is, yeah. amen, then who can be against you? Exactly. Who can have any influence, amen, against God? Exactly. Praise the Lord. Uh, where are we? Okay, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This is the idea behind seeking first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. It's because if God would give the most valuable thing that he has, right. why would he not then give you anything else? Exactly. Or everything else? Exactly. Praise the Lord. Everything else is less. Exactly. Praise. Amen. So who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It's Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus yeah. our Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. By grace, we are conformed to His image. Yes. By grace, we are conformed to His image. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verses uh, 2 and 3. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So I'm guessing that either Tim and I had the same spirit, or he read my notes, praise the Lord. <laughs> I love this. I love it when it happens, praise the Lord. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So Jesus is constantly asking us to shift our focus from the circumstances, from the situation, from the individual, amen, amen, of this world, of all the stuff that's in this culture, amen, to him. Exactly. He's always bigger than any, we already know he's bigger than any problem. He's, he's more than anything that can come against us, and he's always with us. So we have to, no matter how big the obstacle seems, no matter how bad the situation looks, don't look at the situation, look to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's a line in the uh, tectonic uh, terms that's called the Continental Divide. Right. Amen? I was reading the National Geographic <laughs> earlier in the week. That's where I got this, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it just makes sense. You know, when you're, when you're, when you're thinking about the Lord, everything sure. works. You can watch a TV show, and it can be the most stupid thing in the world, but you can see God speaking to you in it. Yeah. Amen. You can read anything and God can speak to you through it. And I see it happen. I see it all the time. Amen. So I'm reading this article. But anyway, I don't want to bog you down with statistics here. But, but there, is a, there is a line. And it's in, in uh, tectonic terms, it's called the Continental Divide. And the line actually determines which way rivers flow. Yes. Now, I lived in Colorado back in the early 70s in my hippie days. Praise the Lord. And uh, I lived out there for a couple of years. And so, I, you know, I, was in, I lived in Aspen. Or actually, I lived in Aspen, and I also lived in Snowmass for a while. But um, you, you see that rivers go different directions on one side of the Rockies than they go on the other. Now, you may have never thought about this or looked at it, but it's, it's a fact. In America, this, this tectonic uh, line this continental divide is called the Great Divide. And it runs from Alaska all the way down through the Rocky Mountains, through Mexico, and into the Andes Mountains in South America. Amen. And the rivers on the west side of the Great Divide usually flow towards the Pacific or the Sea of Cortez. On the east side, they flow either to the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. Praise the Lord. Some information you can Take notes on that if you like. Quote me, praise the Lord. But the rivers on the rest, west side of the, uh, of the divide go to the Pacific. The ones on the east go to the Atlantic. And, of course, the Gulf of Mexico and the Sea of Cortez. But there's a more important divide. And it's a spiritual divide. Amen? It's a line that runs straight through the hearts of men and women. Yes. Between them and eternity. Praise the Lord. Between God and and man. That divide is Romans 6.23. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? The grace of God bridges that gap for anybody that believes. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So, you know, the, the song talks about grace like a river, you know. Mm-hmm. And it is. It flows from God to us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. So then by staying connected... In other words, focused on who we are in Christ, being one with our Father, amen, we become the river. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. That flows into other people's lives. Exactly. That brings eternity mm-hmm. with God mm-hmm. or eternal separation from God. Amen. It's like the scripture says, uh, I'll just paraphrase it, but it says something like this aroma, this, this essence that we give off, mm-hmm. described in that sense as an, as an aroma, but it's a, it's a being, you know. To some, it's the smell of victory. Mm-hmm. And to others, it's the smell of death. Yes. Yep. It's amazing. You can be the same person talking to two different people and they perceive you totally different. Amen. One is drawn to you. Yes. One yes. despises. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. And it's because we're on that great divide. Yes. Right. And rivers are going to flow one way or another. Right. Right. Amen. And it's up to us to help influence the direction the river flows. Right. Praise the Lord. Revelation 22 and verse 1. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. All right, John 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, again, back to the gospel, recalibrating, amen, the result is out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. As we recalibrate, as we go back to this, we become the river. We literally are the river of God flowing and to people, how many of you know in ancient times, especially biblically speaking, wherever rivers flowed, that's where there was abundance. Right. That's where there was more than enough for everybody. Yeah. That's where there was no famine, no lack, right. just continuous resources and blessings. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Luke chapter 2, 48 through 50. When they saw him, they were amazed. This, again, is back to the story where we started. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. So our father's business is grace. Praise the Lord. Give yourself to it. Focus on it, even when others don't understand it. Praise Praise the Lord. And then the result's going to be Luke 2.52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That's what we can look forward to. 
we can become rivers of life to those that are on the great divide. Amen? We can unite them to their Father so that their life will flow with His life throughout eternity. That's what He means by you've been reconciled. Be a reconciler. You've been drawn into the water. Praise the Lord. Ankle, knee, deep, waters to swim in. Now be a river and flow in the direction of God's eternity. Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen. So the next time you're looking for a word, National Geographic is in every barber shop in the United States. Praise the Lord. I call it the natural Gideons. Praise the Lord. Serious. Go back to the word of God. It, 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 God always has something to say. Yes. Amen. About every situation, about every circumstance, and every single time it's about you and him. Hallelujah. About how he loves you and how you can express your love to him. You know, I can't ever put my arms around the Lord. I hope one day to be able to do that in heaven or when we're back here on earth for the millennial reign. But if it never happens, every time we hug the unhuggable, we're hugging God. Didn't he say that? You fed me when I was in prison. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink, right? You visited me. This is what Tim said, right? Praise the Lord. The way we love God is to love others the way he loved them. Amen. Extend the same grace to them that he extended to us. I never can figure this out, how we could be given something free and then want to charge somebody else for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I guess that's called capitalism, but it sure isn't Christianity. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let's let God yes. flow like a river yes. through us. Amen. 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 We've been reconciled. Let's share that reconciliation with everybody else. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great rest of the week. Put on your, uh, well, I was going to say wig hat, Mama, but I'd just say put on a sweater or something because it's going to be cold tomorrow. Praise the Lord. After, after the last few days, it's going to seem like it anyway. See you all back here Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. Be blessed.